I want to get started because I'm so excited about tonight's presentation. So I'm going to stop my share. And get started with our presentation today. So I want to welcome everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is Lynn Pollan. I am the founder of the Walk of Hope, New Jersey. I am a four-year Resolve volunteer and support group host, certified integrative fertility, fertility coach, and co-founder of Kinder Beginnings, a family building support community. I am also the proud author of the Creating Me book series. It is a customizable interactive children's book series for parents to explain conception through assisted reproductive technology to their little one. I am so excited and thrilled to introduce Eugene Corelli, fertility pharmacist and founder of Fertility Home Care, Philadelphia's only in-home fertility injection and support company. Jean is going to talk medications to us. So Jean, welcome. Thank you so much for volunteering your time to be with us today. I am so excited for your presentation. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You are so welcome. Hello. And you're, you're sharing. You're all set I'm up. Sharing. Okay, I'm all set up. Okay, I'll make yeah. sure everyone can see it. <laughs> all right. So yeah, as Liz said, my name is uh, Eugene Corelli. I'm a pharmacist in Philadelphia. Uh, I do work for Penn Medicine, uh, which is a prominent health system in the city here. Um, and I help connect our Penn Fertility Clinics um, with patients and uh, help them get their medications on time and in an affordable manner. Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, ways to save on medications, particularly fertility medications, um, if you're purchasing even through insurance or through self-pay. There's a lot of options out there that people aren't aware of, so we'd like to go through all that if we can. And as Lynn said, um, I did start a company, Fertility Home Care, uh, me and my wife did go through fertility. We had our own journey there. And uh, we were both pharmacists. We both went through an IVF cycle. We had difficulty with the injections, just like everyone else does. Um, and we are even trained as pharmacists to give these shots. So it was, although, um, you know, I know how complicated it can be. Uh, so, you know, we, I see all the patients picking up their medications at the pharmacy. And when they give them this huge bag of medications, I see that stare in their eyes. Um, like, how am I going to do this? So, we started a company to help people uh, inject. So we have nurses that actually go to your home and do the injections for you. We offer training for partners to make them, uh, you know, better prepared to inject the medication safely and effectively. So um, today I'm going to talk to you about the medications. I've been a pharmacist for 11 years. Uh, I've been in the fertility world for the, about the last six. Um, so let's get right into it. All right. So. As you're changing slides here, I just need to say thank you so much because it's so, I was not a pharmacist, so you may have been trained, but I remember walking into that medication training and the nurse saying, oh, well, you know, obviously you just like take it off and like wipe the alcohol swab and yeah. do this. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, can you start over with like, uh, like take the cap off? It was so <laughs> overwhelming. And just the fact that you are kind of bridging that gap and making people feel comfortable is just it, it's just so needed and important in our community. So thank you for, for coming up with this idea and offering it to our local community. It's so awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here for. Um, so at least on this slide deck, I'll kind of go over a few different things here. So first, I'm going to cover the specialty medication process. Uh, these medications are a little different than your, just your regular like blood pressure, cholesterol medication. So the process to getting them is a little different. Um, I'll talk about things you can do before starting fertility, um, before you're going through um, your whole cycle. And then financial assistance programs, uh, there's many out there, so I'll go through a lot of them. And then also cover some common fertility medications, since not everyone has gone through an IVF cycle and understands, you know, all the medications that are entailed in this. So I'll cover that as well. Um, so first, just to kind of give a number, um, so in the United States, the average cost of an IVF infertility medication cycle for a single cycle is about $3,500. So some people will pay with insurance, you know, zero or, you know, just their straight copays, which might be, you know, very affordable. And then some patients, you know, might pay, you know, $10,000 or more. Uh, but the average patient for a single IVF cycle just for the medications pay about $3,500. Um, so this outside of the procedure and the medical end of things, um, can be very costly. And this is often, a, you know, a very rate limiting factor for a lot of people. Right. Now, not to be too confusing, but 
I wanted to give a complete overview of what it takes to get a specialty medication. So specialty medications are high cost drugs that require like special counseling um, and special administration. So fertility medications fall in that category. So in the top left corner, you'll see when an RX is sent to the pharmacy, a prescription is first sent by your doctor, you get kind of one of three responses. In green, you get covered, which in my experience, not many fertility med medications are just covered off the bat. Um, it might be less than 5%. Or you get not covered, which I kind of highlighted in red, which might be a little bit more common. But most of the time, you get a response from your insurance called a prior authorization, which basically means it's the insurance company saying, well, we may cover the medications, but we want a lot more information before we'll cover them. So I highlighted that in like the dotted box over there. And this whole process usually can take upwards of three to seven days. The doctor will have to send information to your insurance company explaining your drugs, your dosage, everything about your cycle. The insurance wants to know why you're taking them and you know how you're taking them and for how long. Um, the insurance will review that information. They have doctors and pharmacists on staff. Uh, and then they make a determination uh, whether they're going to cover the meds or not. So if they decide they're not going to cover the meds, even after going through that whole process, you're kind of back to square one. And at that point, you're in our other red box where you now have to make a cash pay or use some sort of financial resources, which I'll go over uh, later in this slide deck. Um, but if they do decide they're going to cover the medications, you're not completely out of the woods yet. Uh, there are several things you have to do before you necessarily can get the medications in hand. Um, so even if they're going through that process, which might take up to seven days, we have to go through more, more steps here. So uh, you'll see that a lot of people have to go through like plan limitations with their insurance. So you may have a deductible or copays with these medications. They may not be, you know, a flat copay like your cholesterol meds. You know, they might be very high. You might pay a percentage of the cost of the drug. So if the drug is $3,000 and you're paying like 10%, you know, it could be $300. Um, they might require preferred manufacturers. So if your doctor prescribes, say like a follow some AQ device, uh, they may prefer to use a Gonal F product. So in that case, the pharmacy would then have to contact the doctor and get the medication changed to the preferred product before you can even get the medication. And then another plan limitations in purple is a preferred pharmacy. So a lot of these insurance companies, if the meds do get approved, they don't just let you go to any pharmacy to get these. You have to go to an accredited specialty pharmacy. And oftentimes these insurance companies own their own pharmacy, so they want you to use their pharmacy. So they'll restrict you to a mail order pharmacy. So these prescriptions would then have to be forwarded to a mail order pharmacy. And that pharmacy would then have to get all your information because you're usually a new patient there. Uh, that pharmacy would then collect your copays, fill the meds, ship the meds, and deliver them to your home, which can, you know, can take an additional week sometimes. It depends on the pharmacy and the doctor and, uh, and everything that's going on. So this whole process, you know, from the time the prescription is sent to the pharmacy, to the time you actually receive the medications in hand, can be just a couple of days, but oftentimes it takes up to about two weeks to get these medications. If you have a very efficient pharmacy and very efficient doctor, you know, it can be faster, but we often say about two weeks is like the average for most people to get these medications. So, so things you can do prior to starting fertility. Uh, so number one, call your insurance company, right? So you can call your insurance at any time and ask them, um, you know, about your coverage. Are my medications covered? If I do this cycle, your insurance has all that information prior to you even starting. It's important to know the difference between your medical and prescription coverage. Sometimes they're combined into the same company, but several times you have one company providing your medical benefits and you have another company providing your prescription benefit. They don't always communicate very well. So sometimes your procedure and your medications and like your IVF can be covered like on the medical side of things but the medications you know, may not be covered or vice versa. Sometimes the meds are covered and you can't even get a cycle approved. So we see that sometimes. So when you're calling for a prescription coverage, make sure you're calling your prescription benefits. It might be a separate company uh, than your medical benefit. Uh, the second thing is time. So uh, just make sure you have enough time to complete the process as you saw in the previous slide deck. Uh, this can take upwards of like two weeks. So if you have to start like on a Thursday and the prescriptions are sent to your pharmacy on the Monday before, you might not be able to get the medications in time to start your cycle. 
Uh, so make sure you have enough time frame in there to get all your medications covered and in hand before you, you know, start everything. What, and what, finally, what, what happens then though, Gene? Like what happens like if you're like my cycle starting on Monday and I can't get my meds on time? Is there like a trick? Uh, some people delay their cycle an entire month, you know, until they get the medications approved uh, or they pay out of pocket, which is not ideal if the medications will be covered, you know. So a lot of times people will skip, you know, skip a cycle about, you know, about 30 days or so and then start at that time. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard. Yeah. Which is already, it's already a time consuming process. If anyone's been through fertility, you already know, you know, so extending another month just to deal with insurance is not really ideal. Yeah. So get a head start. That's, that's the tip. Get a head start if you can. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, last thing would be cost, you know, so you can also talk to your plan, see if you have a deductible under your insurance. Um, you can find out, you know, what the deductible is, how much it is with the prescription benefits. Sometimes it's combined with your medical, sometimes it's separate. So if you have a $5,000 deductible and your meds cost $10,000, you're going to have to pay $5,000 up front, uh, before your copay is set in, even if the meds are covered. Um, so that's often a limiting factor for a lot of people. And some insurance companies require reimbursement, which basically means they require that you pay the full cost of medications, say all $10,000, and then they've reimbursed you like 70 or 80%, like a certain percentage uh, back and they'll, they'll send you a check. Uh, but you have to put all the money up front. So find out from your insurance, you know, how you have to pay, what you have to pay and what your deductibles are. And that's uh, all stuff you can do prior to even starting fertility. Right. So if your medications are covered, uh, it's not usually it's not usually a problem for most people. Most of the time, it's pretty affordable, or there's ways to get coupons, which I'll talk about. Uh, but I really want to focus the whole talk on here about meds not being covered, uh, because this is really where people are spending the most money uh, and they need the most help, you know, forwarding their medications. So there's a couple things that are listed here um, that you can do when your medications are not covered after going through that whole prioritization step or whatever it might be you find out your medications are not covered. Um, so first is talk to your fertility clinic, all right? So a lot of times these fertility clinics have a pharmacy partner that they work with. They might refer you to that particular pharmacy. And if you're going to that clinic, you'll get a discount by using that pharmacy. Um, so always talk to your fertility clinic. They also have shared risk programs and multi-cycle discount programs at your clinics a lot of times. Shared risk is basically if the, the clinic takes on the risk of uh, the patient not becoming pregnant. So you get part of your money back if you don't become pregnant at the end of the cycle. And then also multi-cycle multi discounts are you pay for multiple IVF cycles. Um, you save in the long run if you're going to end up doing multiple cycles, but if you only end up doing one, you end up overpaying a little bit. Uh, but if you end up doing multiple, you do save some money there, sometimes upwards of 40 or 50%. So that money is on the medical side of things, but you could save those funds and then use them for the drugs um, if you can save them on the medical side. All right. Um, compare pharmacy prices. So, you know, every pharmacy sells these drugs at different costs. Um, it's just like shopping for a TV. If you wanted to go get a TV, you go to Walmart, you go to Target, try to find the best price. It's the same thing at pharmacies. All these drugs are available at all the pharmacies at all different costs. Uh, so, you know, call around the different pharmacies and see what they have. You might buy one medication in one place and one medication in another, and it might save you, you know, uh, that way. Uh, some of them do medication bundling, whereas if you get more medications as a whole through their pharmacy, it'll give you a bigger discount. And some, since you're buying medications out of pocket and you're not using insurance, you can kind of buy as you go. So if the doctor prescribes, say, like seven syringes of Ganyarelics, um, you don't know how many you're going to need for the cycle rather than purchasing all seven up front. Some people choose to just purchase like maybe three or four. And then as they're going through the cycle, if they need more, they buy one or two or three syringes at a time. Um, and that can help save you because sometimes at the end of people's cycles, you know, they have extra medications. They kind of estimate what you're going to need at the beginning of your cycle. And you don't end up using that sometimes. Sometimes you need more, but sometimes you don't end up using all of it. So. Um, if you have any HSA or FSA funds, you know, pre-tax money, use that on your co-pays. Um, and then manufacturer discount programs and fertility financing, I'll talk about over the next couple of slides here, because uh, these are other ways to save on medications, either through insurance or, or without. So. Um, so 
manufacturers. So it's important to note that about 90% of all fertility medications are made by basically three companies. Uh, there's a lot of meds out there, but they're kind of all honed in by a couple of companies. So EMD Serrano makes the three medications below. Ferrin makes Menipure and Navaril and Endometrium. And then Merck makes uh, Folistim, Ganyarelix, and Pregno. Um, and I believe actually Merck uh, owns EMD Serrano. So they're like an umbrella company. They basically own all of this, really. Um, but each company offers their own discount programs. Um, so if you're on these particular medications, you can sign up with their particular program and try to save some money that way. So I'll go through each of the companies and what they offer here. Uh, so the first one is EMD Serrano. So they have a program called Compassionate Care, and I listed the medications on the side so everyone can see. Um, but they offer discounts of 25, 50, or 75% for patients paying out of pocket. It is based on your annual gross income, so you do have to share your tax returns and other financial information that they want. Um, and you do have to use a participating pharmacy that they have, which I think, I think they have about 15 to 20 available pharmacies that you can go to. Um, some mail order, some are local. Uh, but once you put your information in and um, you qualify, you can get one of those discounts. Now, obviously the more money you make, the, the lower the discount. Um, but if you have a lower income, you can potentially get a higher discount. Um, now, it's important to note that it's only for these three medications, so you can't use it on any of the other ones. But if you're on any of these three, it's something that you can do. And then for, they also offer a go direct rebate program, which is basically if you purchase the medications at your own pharmacy and you already use the medications, you can submit a receipt to them and get reimbursed for up to 10% off of each unit. Uh, it's for people that had already purchased the medication. So it's a smaller discount, but you know, you might've gotten a better deal at a local pharmacy. So getting 10% off that lower deal might be better than getting 25% off at, you know, their preferred pharmacy. Uh, so if you don't have a receipt from what you paid for, just call your pharmacy. They'll print you one. Don't worry about that. I never have my receipt. So uh, the second one is IVF's green light, which is made by, uh, you know, Faring uh, Pharmaceuticals. And they primarily make Manipure and Novaril. This is only a rebate program. So you have to purchase the medications at your local pharmacy or you know, accredited specialty pharmacy, wherever you're going. But what's really nice is they don't require any financial criteria. So you don't have to submit any tax returns or any information to them. Um, and it works for both self-paying and insurance. So if you had insurance and your copays were $200, you could potentially get all that money back. Uh, so it's something you would actually submit to them. They do have some minimum drug quantity purchase requirements. So you have to purchase like a minimum amount of drugs to qualify for the program. Um, I think it's at least 12 vials of Menipure, and I think you have to do uh, obviously at least one Navarro. Um, and they're connected with Ganyarelix, so I think that you have to purchase at least five Ganyarelix and you can partly use it for this program too. So um, this one's very nice because it works for both people paying self-pay and insurance. And then the last one is um, one called uh, Reunite Assist, which is made by Merck. Um, so again, this is very similar to the Compassionate Care one. They offer a discount uh, for self-paying patients only. They do base it off your annual gross income, so you need tax returns as well. And you have to go to a participating uh, pharmacy in order to get these discounts. Uh, but again, they have a lot of pharmacies available as well. So if, you know, if you're taking some of these medications, you could potentially sign up for different programs and try to save through different pharmacies, depending on what you're taking. For special populations, if you're a veteran uh, or in the military, each of these companies, I have all three listed on the side here, uh, Compassionate Corps, which is EMD Serrano's program, Heart for Heroes, which is Farring, uh, Farring Pharmaceuticals, and then Reunited Assist for Veteran. They all offer discounts for people who are in the military or uh, a veteran, and they do cover for spouses as well. Um, I think Heart for Heroes specifically will give free medications out for qualifying veterans, um, whereas the other two will give, you know, significant discounts um, you know, if you or a spouse um, are in the military and going through uh, fertility treatment. And then for cancer patients, they also have their own version of cancer uh, support, uh, Live Strong Fertility with EMD Serrano, and then Heartbeat with uh, Farring Pharmaceuticals and Reunite. Um, so they, these ones will all basically give free medications to people going through fertility um, if you were diagnosed with a, a cancer diagnosis. Most likely, uh, for most of them, you have to not have gone through any chemotherapy yet. So it has to be egg preservation prior to chemotherapy. 
um, but they will provide basically free medications up to certain limitations. Uh, and most fertility clinics are connected with this as well. So if there's any cross diagnoses with cancer and fertility, they'll connect you automatically with one of these programs. Gene, is there anything for people that have already been through chemo that you know of? That so for example, if you, if, you, if you had childhood cancer, just for example, and you didn't, like egg preservation was not a thing. Mm -hmm. And now you're coming and now you have fertility issues because of that. Do you know of any kind of programs that help to bridge the gap there? I think most of these programs will still offer some support in that way. Um, if you have a previous diagnosis, um, the medications may not be free, uh, but I think they do offer some support in the way of giving medications out to people who are trying to do egg preservation. If you're trying to do like an active IVF cycle, I don't believe any of these programs work for that. Uh, but if you just want to freeze the eggs, that, that this is the way to go. So it's worth making an outreach. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, now, not everyone knows a lot about fertility. Maybe that's on the call, but at some point uh, in your fertility cycle, you'll probably have to supplement with progesterone. There are two main types of progesterone um, that are vaginal, which is crinoline and endometrium here. The other forms, which are oral and injectable, are pretty cheap or covered by most insurances. So I really won't discuss them, but these two versions, which are vaginal forms are very expensive. Um, so crinone on the left-hand side, I actually really like this coupon. Um, they, give you 50, um, they give you $200 off your copay or out-of-pocket cost of the drug. So if your copay is $300, you know, it will be $100 copay automatically. Um, if your copay is $200, then you pay 15, $15 is the minimum. Um, you can't use it with any government programs like Medicaid, Medicare, or TRICARE. Um, but if you have any private insurance at all, like Aetna, Independence Blue Cross, United Healthcare, you can use this. It only covers a maximum of 30 days, but you can use it on an infinite number of refills. So I gave a link at the bottom here. You can go on that website, sign up. It's completely free. They just want some information so they can mail you some things. And then uh, you get this coupon card that you can bring to your pharmacy and that pharmacy will bill it secondary to your insurance and it will just automatically lower your copay. I use it for almost every single one of my patients uh, because these medications are usually not covered very well um, and usually have pretty high copays if they are. And um, endometrium offers kind of the same thing, uh, but they only take $30 off your copay, so it's a little less. You can only use it 14 uh, days at a time. So in a 60 and a 30 day period, you can get you know, $60 off because uh, you can use it for multiple refills. What's nice about this one is you don't have to put any information in. If you just copy that link and put it into your uh, web address, it'll just give you that coupon straight up. And every single person can use it for an unlimited amount. Uh, every year it expires, but they just put a new one up. So it's pretty nice. The final uh, thing I'll talk about is fertility financing. So if none of these above options work for you and you still have to pay out of pocket, you can borrow the money. Um, I listed a few companies on the right-hand side here, but there's many, many more. Um, and you can sign up with one of these companies. They're going to a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, income and credit requirements from you. Uh, the rates are basically between 5 and 8%, uh, and the terms can range from one year to you know, um, 84 months. Uh, the thing is you want to try to avoid any like origination fees and prepayment penalties if you can, uh, but they'll give you sometimes money for the medical side of things, sometimes money for the prescription side of things, um, or sometimes both. You can use the funds for whatever you want. Uh, so let's see. Uh, yeah, there are loan re amount restrictions. So sometimes they only let you borrow up to a certain amount. And sometimes you have to say, uh, you have to start your therapy within, say, you know, a few months of like applying for one of these programs. So if you apply and you get approved and you're not starting therapy right away, you may have to reapprove, you know, before you're going, going through it. But this is another option since you can extend it over, you know, up to 84 months for some of the companies, um, a way to kind of borrow the money and then pay it down over time. Um, just to go over some fertility medications. So when you go to call your insurance, if you want to know if the medications are covered, but you're not sure, uh, you know, what's a fertility medication, you can kind of give them some of these names if you'd like. Um, in my practice at Penn, this is primarily what we see. So if you're doing a pre-retrieval IVF, uh, you'll go through a lot of these medications over here on the left-hand side. 
And then post retrieval is mostly hormonal supplements, the progesterone and um, estradiol supplements that I talked about earlier. And then if you're going through um, intrauterine insemination, uh, there's a few medications there at the bottom as well. So anything with a little copyright symbol next to it is a brand name product. So there's no generic available for it on the market, uh, which means basically everything with a copyright is a very high cost drug. Uh, so these are all the things that we're trying to save money on, which you can see is most of the fertility medications. And hopefully we'll see some generics come out in the market over the next you know, five years or so. And I did apply um, all of the links to everything that I talked about. So for the three companies that I mentioned, these are the links for these. Um, so you can access them directly from here, copy them out. And then uh, I also just want to mention, you know, on the Resolve website, there's a lot of good information on there. They actually cover a lot of these same topics and they have several more lending companies um, and other resources that you can use. So definitely check that out. I put their link on here. And I put the, a couple of the lending options that I had um, on, my, uh, on my previous slide as well. So let me see here. So I just wanna thank everyone for allowing me to talk today. Hopefully it was helpful. And um, I'm gonna put the slideshow on my website listed there. Uh, so everyone can download it for free, you know, if they wanna access any links or they forget anything I talked about. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always contact me through the website as well. Yeah, and we'll be sure to link it on the, the Walk of Hope New Jersey webpage, and it's going to get put out in, in the email blast as well. This is such great information, Jean, because so often, you know, as a fertility patient, you go through so much and just trying to navigate your journey. You're, you're trying to make hard decisions and like, what am I doing and how am I feeling and what's the next step? And then all of a sudden you get hit with like, now you have all these medications and this financial burden. There was so much good information in here on how we can how we can navigate that, like that there are options available to help us um, with these costs and the coupons. I had no idea that there were coupon options that were that were available. So this is such great information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for um, some of the medications. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for some of them, yes, for some of them, yes. Um, so I, I wanna give some time for any questions that anybody may have that's on the call. You can use the Q&A or the chat and so um, if you have a question, please type it in or a comment. We have a, he's doing great comment. That was for me. <laughs> Let me see if yeah, I can. I'll hop into Jean and I'll say like, this is, this is really valuable. I'm also in the medical field um, and I remember when Lynn was going through her, her first cycle, how difficult this was for her literally going to help her figure out how, how to do this right in her kitchen. She gave me a shot um, in my bum. I was like, where the I upper did. right bum? I, did, I was I like, I don't to, even know what they're saying to me. I did have to inject her for the first time. That was me. Um, but I think the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway for, for me from your presentation is it's really, again, it comes down to self-advocacy, right? It comes down to using your voice asking the questions, making yourself being heard. Um, because I feel like a lot of times in medicine, and especially in, in infertility journeys, we're, like Lynn said, we're so overwhelmed with choices and decisions that we, sometimes a patient can be a little paralyzed, right? And they just don't know where to do, what, where to go or what to do. Um, so this is just really helpful information to sort of walk people through what can be a very complex system and process. So thank you for this. It's amazing. I feel like it should be mandatory. I feel like anybody that it should is, be, <laughs> Absolutely. this is what, this is what needs to be shared. This information needs to get out there and you've done that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. unless I'm missing something, I don't see any questions. Mm -hmm. Chris, yeah, can you just confirm that? that? No, nope, you are all good. <laughs> <laughs> just want to make sure. Um, I'm going to go back and just share my screen. Uh, for a second, because, um, you know, just just to kind of close this out, um, this was wonderful. And, you know, Jean and all of our presenters are volunteering their time to be here with us with the Block of Hope, New Jersey, and giving you this information. So thank you to Jean and all of our presenters for presenting. Um, our Walk of Hope, New Jersey is still accepting donations. They are benefiting Resolve, the National Infertility Association. We have it linked up there. So if you like what you've seen today, please share it. Please go on and donate. 
Your donations truly make a difference for our family building community to offer support, education, and resources uh, like this. So Jean, thank you. Thank you so much. You are wonderful. Um, this was excellent information. Thank you yeah, so thanks much. For, for uh, thanks for having me on. This was, uh, this was fun. And if anyone has any questions later, I'm happy to, you know, just talk to anyone about anything if they, um, even outside of medications, but that's kind of my uh, strong suit, I guess. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> it sure <laughs> is. You're the man to go to. <laughs> thanks, Jean. All right, thank you guys.